Tourism in Enugu State. The World Health Organization and its partners start a vaccination campaign to control the spread of yellow fever in parts of Congo Brazzaville. Africa 54, Monday to Thursday at 2.30 p.m. to you my name is Orville Higgins and welcome to another night of Red Stripe Premier League Monday Night Football right here on CVM television tonight's game will feature former champions Arnett Gardens taking on the exciting UWI right here at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex and if the first part of the season is anything to go by then it should be goals and more goals and more goals with me is former Jamaica player and coach Ali McNabb sir Ali we've seen lots of goals and if this um, if these two attacking teams play the way they normally do, then it could be another goal field encounter. Well, no, we're in the jungle, and the jungle is a place where the, the junglists are hard to beat. And I tell you, UW, uh, UWI is also a pretty good team. The, 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 the interesting thing about tonight is that they're both on three points each, and a win tonight for either would leapfrog them right into second place behind Waterhouse. But let me tell you, tonight's game it's going to be hard for UWI. The junglists in jungle under the lights. I'm excited. I'm expecting an exciting game and more goals, as you say. Definitely. Now, both teams have won one and lost one since the start of the season. The UWI beat Tivoli 4 0 in their opening game and then lost to Malines United 3 2. And then for Arnett Guns, for Arnett Guns, they lost 3 1 to Humble Line. And then they beat Tivoli 5 1 goal to nil. So both teams are on three points one win, one loss. And they'll both won of their third game with a W in the win column. Well, I noticed in the lineup tonight that um, Arnett Gardens has Damari Beacon on the bench. He scored a goal in the last game for them. Is he a super sub? Is he a secret weapon? We'll wait and see. All right, so before all that, though, before the same time, we want to do a football story where we take a look at both teams. The University of the West Indies, we recently came into the Premier League. Um, the first season we actually did very well. We came second. Um, from that, we, we've stumbled a little, but we are no kidding. Uh, we, we went to the playoffs. Unfortunately, we lost to uh, Mount Pleasant. So, we did well last season. Our program now, it's, um, it heavily involves the student athletes, um, so students on scholarship. They play football for us, but obviously they're students, um, so we're giving them opportunities by going to school, getting some academic backgrounds, a bachelor degree, or even further. Well, we have 80% students, and we have 20% players who are professionals, um, so we look at those professionals who can give the youngsters that right um, leadership. Um, they also have good um, technical abilities on the field, and that's how we selected that 20%. Finance is very, it's very difficult right now. Omel kind of eased up the burden. Omel is a, it's a sports gear. First they approached, they approached our national goalkeeper Amal Knight, but the kindness of his heart, he said, you know, speak to admin of the UFC and then we spoke and there was a partnership that developed last year. We have a strong team. We are, everything is good in training. Everybody is, uh, we are appeased and we're fit. We know that we're fit. Uh, yeah, we look good. That was a good team going this season. The past two seasons we've, we've seen growth and now the program is excelling well. So we just look to the consistency and have some success in the future. We have a strong team. We, uh, 
Everything is good in training. Everybody is, on our, we are on our P's and Q's. We're fit. We know that we're fit. Uh, yeah, we look good. That was a good team going this season. Every game is a new challenge. Every game, each team that we face brings something different. I think we're going to win the league, so yeah, it's going to be better this season for us. It's a guarantee. The football story where every match is an experience. Chris Marshall, Vice President of the Arnold Garden Football Club, with the responsibility of the infrastructure. Well, Arnett have been around from 1977 and is a football driven community. Um, you know, they were, they were a double champion and last, the last two seasons went to the top six, you know, and that was it. But this season we're trying to go a little bit further than before. Last several years, we have won it twice, we reached the semi-finals and probably four of our, about six, six years. Last year we never did so well, we finished fifth. But we have won the title five times overall. We have some good type of players. We have to just work, work and work. The preparation was good, but the, 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 the change so sudden, you know, it have a, have a little impact. So we know we have to give ourselves enough time. But everybody is a challenger. Everybody, every single team is a challenger. I, I didn't get the chance to recruit anyone. It was like four days in preparation for the first game. So, and the transfer window closed like two days later. So it wasn't any chance. I have to work with players that are in the club, try to find the best chemistry possible. Well, as business as usual, anyone, every, any coach come in, you have to work and dig in and fight. Every team is our biggest rivals. Don't take no team like I will prepare for every team. Everybody is our rival. Everybody, when they come against Arnett, they want to beat Arnett. We yeah, look forward to a good season. We're there for the world best. Yeah. So when the tiger wants to in it, we in it to win it. The football story where every match is an experience. It seems we're getting started. It feels just like a party. It's time to get in the zone. And now that we have started, I love just feel your body. Like come and give me some more. All right, so um, Anthony Spalling Sports Complex, it's Monday Night Football, and there's a shot of the two. Teams of goals in the Premier League. There's a shot of the port out there in the Port Bustamante, and there's a look at the officials. Um, coming out with the flags. The officials for this one, by the way, Damien Parchment is the man in the middle. And he'll be assisted on the lines by Nicholas Anderson and OJ Dohaney with Andre Farkasson as the fourth official. And um, not the biggest crowd here, Sir Ali, but um, Anik Gardens is known to fill up pretty quickly. And uh, here's hoping that we'll see a little bit more. Well, once the whistle goes, you know that they're going to be coming out of all the little places that they may be in. And uh, they, they support their football here in the jungle. And that is what I like about them. As you see the teams coming out, Orville, you just mentioned the officials. Danian Parchment is the referee. And um, yeah, we had the match, com uh, match com uh, commissioner is Martin Lynn. Yeah. A man who has been around in the game for quite some time. All right, so those are the teams coming out. 
And the gods, of course, in their traditional red and black. And the UWI will be playing in all white. And these two teams, as I said at the start, they have won one and lost one. And the gods lost 3 1 to Humble Line in their opening game before they rallied to beat Tivoli by one goal to nil. The UWI, UWI they did beat Tivoli 4 0, but then lost in a goal scoring encounter. A, a, a game full of goals. They lost 3 2 to Malign United. Well, they're all the same in the, in the, in the standing because you do have guys on three points, Bear on three, and Arnett on three. All right, here is the play now of the. All right, so the national anthem has uh, just been played, and now it's time for the teams to do the usual meeting and greeting of each other. The action should be getting on the way in uh, pretty given time. But as we were saying there, Sir Ali, lots of goals in one game. Harbour View lost seven goals to nil, and we have seen goals galore in this in this year's tournament. Well, we can talk about the Harbour View Waterhouse game as we go. But I just wanted to mention to you, Orville, that um, Arnett is playing the 4-3-3 formation. And uh, UWI has opted to have the 4-2-3-1 formation, which I think is a little sensible coming to them. Uh, in, in All right, there's the Arnett Gardens start list. Um, Coach Alex Thomas. And um, the player to be really watching out for, Vishnul Harris, number eight. When he plays the game, then on the gardens usually have the game Damien Height in goal uh, may want to reclaim a spot for the national team as a goalkeeper. Um, so look out for him. He's in fact um, the man uh, captaining the team today. And here are the officials, as, as you already heard, Dane and Parchment will be charged with calling the game in the middle. And then this now is the UWI starting lineup, Jabari Hilton. The number 14 he scored three goals in the competition so far and look out for him he's the man and from Pierre, the coach will be expecting to continue to be a thorn in the side of the opposing team and while we see a thorn thorn simpson number nine um is a player that is also highly thought of it's two teams now in a little huddle as they typically do and we'll go through the please just um, do what they do before every game um, go through the lineups. We did give you, well, we did show you the um, starting lineups, but we'll uh, be a little bit more specific as to who is expected to play where. Um, but uh, uh, as we go along, sir, Ali, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you that. But um, the referee is doing their checks. Somebody asked me once, why don't they do this long before the game? They do, um, but they are double checking again. They double check. Something could happen. Yeah, in, in the few in the, minutes. In the, in, the, in the last time. They, they, but you mentioned the, um, the, the young man called Thorn Simpson. He's a striker that is very busy, and he could create a lot of problems um, for Arnett tonight. Of course, as you mentioned, Jabari Hilton. He has hit the back of the net on three occasions, so he's up there. Um, you mentioned the Waterhouse game. Yeah. That is a little bit of a problem because now you have three. Waterhouse players at the top of the goal scoring chart, but we'll get into that. Okay, here's Mr. Dane and Parchment just looking around, ensuring that all is well. And any minute now, we'll have the kickoff. It's going to be the UWI who will start the proceedings here. And there they go, Horn Simpson and Barrett making the kickoff coming over to Zelana Barnes, who goes all the way back to. 
is central defender. And um, early days yet. Rashan Plummer comes back defensively. And uh, Plummer will make the throw. You expect Arnett Gardens here, uh, Ali, to play their usual attacking style football. Well, certainly that is the way they played when Jerome Waite was the man in charge. Of course, Jerome Waite no longer here. That job being given to Alex Damas on cue. There he is. <laughs> and um, still a little too early to find out what exactly is his style. But Arnett Gardens, you feel, will always be a hard-pressing, hard-running team. Well, to play at home, and they're playing the 4-3-3 formation, which really suggests that they're going to be on the attack because um, one of those midfielders are going to come into the attack to make it four up front um, whenever they're in attack. It's a question of how they recover from what I think UW is going to come here to do, play the possum and really go on the counter when it's necessary. Ball predominantly, that's Andrew Peer, the coach of the UWIT. The ball for the first uh, minutes and 20 seconds exclusively on the far left side. And uh, neither team managing to just quite settle down yet. Um, a little, to say, erratic start to the first half. Neither team has put together any smooth build-up. There's a ball headed away. And, uh, neither team is yet putting down the football. And it guards that. And uh, here is... Uh, the year of the white the game sir ali predominantly on that left side nobody has seen all well finally it has um come as, to the center of the bar as it <laughs> maybe patrick brown for anik guards now down the left hand side and uh, what will he do with it he will twist and turns and then ends up losing it tries to win it back but it's zelana barnes who gets away with it and cleared long into our territory slow start to the game I think they're feeling each other out. Um, it appears to me that the 4 2 3 1 formation that um, UWI is employing is not something that they're all that familiar with. Most teams don't play that because it's predominantly a uh, defensive counter attacking style. Okay, here's uh, Patrick Brown again with a long ball upfield, and again, not the best clearance. Fishing will Harris is trying to get to the end of it. Harris is fouled, is he? No, the referee says play on. Referee wasn't buying that that time around. Here is the UWI. Long ball downfield, hoping to pick out Simpson. Again, it appears as if the ball is hot and nobody wants to hold on to it. They just keep playing it, you know, across on the way. I haven't seen the ball being put on the ground and in a decent passes. Well, here might be the first one. It's Patrick Brown again. He gives it away. Patrick Brown, the number 12, has been on both sides of the park. Here is Harris. And Harris comes back defensively. The referee didn't quite like that. We still on the play. And after just under four minutes, it's uh, the law on the clock. Shamar Hunter went in a little hard that time and on Brown. And rightly so, um, the referee pulled it back. All right, here's the game's first goal kick. And it guards, of course, would have won the competition on a number of occasions. Um, five times winners of the National Premier League. While this UWI team came into the league about four years ago, I think the 2014-15 season. Yes, they did. And uh, if you remember at that time, it was Bertis Bell who was coaching them at that time. And they did well. And they have, they have been mid-table most of the time. They've provided good competition. Uh, they just haven't shown that little edge that will take them to the top of the competition. A robust clearance there from Ricardo Older. And that's Wayne Barrett, the number 10 there for the UWI team, goes to the ground. And uh, look at the challenge. Oh. Paul Wilson would have clipped his man. And uh, the game just predominantly on the, on the left hand side of the field for the most part. Left side in the boot or attacking area after five minutes it's a, it's a disappointing start it's a strange um, way I've never seen a, a game where it's predominantly on the right hand side so maybe they're seeing something that we're not 
team yet. Are they playing to the crowd in the in the stand? Well, maybe they want to play in front of <laughs> the crowd. Here is that Portmore but again. All that makes the clearance. Now Wilson. Now the ball is looped up in front. This could be a chance. Oh, that time around, uh, I think it was Javan Sims or was it Michael Harris? They're trying to get to the end of it. Maybe the first real attacking effort by the Anand Gardens team. The keeper here has to be careful. And uh, here is Yudu Blowai with it again. And uh, some good work that time done by Fabian McCarthy. Now Zelano Barnes. And I'm not quite sure what that was about, but it will fall for a corner kick to Anand Gardens. It's a comedy of errors so far because um, I'm not at all sure what that number 19 was trying to do. Not sure either. I mean, there were three passes that he could have made. Well, here's the game's first corner, and yep. it's the way of honor. Patrick Brown seems already to be uh, one of the busier players. Takes it short. Here's the ball coming in and headed away. Oh, nobody from. The Anand Gardens could get ahead uh, to it. This could still be dangerous. And the shot that came was not on target. And again, it is Patrick Brown, the man already. He's um, demonstrating high workload. And uh, certainly one of the busier players on the field. So far. Well, Brown certainly looks as if he has come to play. He seems to be in the mood. He's all over the pitch. And uh, there he had an opportunity to put his team ahead. Again, the attack all going just in the direction of the crowd just before the grandstand. I think the, the, the good thing is, oh, well, it can't get any worse. It's going to get better. Well, let's hope you're still done now for Anik Gardens. He sticks it across nicely. And then he picks out Michael Webb, but Webb didn't force his way through. Hold him again. This time he comes to his left. Patrick Brown, he seems to be everywhere. Over to the left hand side for Michael Webb to chase. Webb oh, just couldn't keep the ball in. Uh, well, he did get the ball off his man and um, will go for a corner kick. And the Gardens maybe just settling down a little bit quicker than this, you know, right? Certainly, and that left wing back um, should have fired the ball over um, immediately. He had the opportunity. He was looking for the man, but his job would have been finished in putting the ball at the penalty box. Paul Wilson will take the corner kick, floated to the back post. Not the greatest of efforts. Nobody could get to that, neither any of his teammates in red and black, neither anybody in a white shirt. And Paul Wilson maybe just holding up an apologetic hand to a teammate to say, well, maybe I drank a little bit too much porridge earlier. <laughs> that had too much muscle behind it. I wouldn't have blamed him because the, 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 the forwards did not line up properly. Somebody should have been on the outside coming in, two in the middle and one at the near post. And that wasn't happening. Right, the, the corner kick eluded them all. Here is the kick by Atman Knight, the UWI goalkeeper. Again, the ball into touch. Same spot. Same spot. Playing just in front of the crowd. Here's Anand Gardens now. Here's Oldham playing in that central defensive midfield. A hard tackle up over to Michael Webb. Back to Oldham. Now here's Wilson with a nice little clever little ball over to the right. Back to Wilson. And Wilson does well. Looks to be Shamar Price over that side. Here it is. Vishnu Harris is trying to make that final pass. Could still be danger here. And here's a chance for Wilson. Wilson twisted and turned and did all kinds of things, but didn't get the shot on target. But Arnett Gardens now beginning to come into the room. Yes, they are settling, they're at home, and they should be the team that's going to um, settle first. Uh, here's the opportunity. Beat his man nicely, got around, should have fired a shot first time. Uh, good defensive work. The center half, um, I believe it was Salmon who came across and kind of closed him down. Yeah, forced him to go wide. And that's one of the art of defending too. Um, force the player to go where he doesn't want to go without fouling him. And uh, here's another attempt by UWI. Some 
good defensive work. Ball will be cleared away by Jamar Martin, but he doesn't. And uh, what will the referee do here? He says, is that a corner kick? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Jamar Martin who made a meal of that clearance. And it's going to be a, uh, the first corner kick for this. Uh, Why would he right? want to play out from there? Although? It doesn't make sense to me. It, it, there was danger. All he had to do was move the ball forward, carry his teammate with him, and leave that person there. There he is giving up a corner. Yeah. So let's see. It's the first corner for the UWI team. Here it is floated inside. What will happen here? It's a, it's headed away. And um, no danger in the end. And it does will come away with it. Maybe it's going like a cheetah down the left hand side. Inside. Good ball that. Uh, from Sims. It comes back over to Webb, but that's a little bit too too fast for him. And the crowd has suddenly come alive because the home team is um, putting a few more passes together and looking a little bit more threatening at the moment than this uh, unified team. Well, Webb has been doing pretty good work on the left-hand side. I think they're going to have to play with him or bring him into play some more because he looks like he, he's also ready to play. Here is uh, the UWI team. Some good work that by Zelana Barnes. Oh, giving away. And here is uh, Wilson, very influential attacking midfielder. And Wilson. So Patrick Brown, Brown loses by one, by two. On the outside, official Harris with control. A little groan from the crowd, comes back to Patrick Brown. Puts it on the left. Oh, show the defender too much of it. Patrick Brown seems, the number 12, seems to be giving the role to be everywhere. He's uh, all over the park. And this is an opportunity. Look at the pass here. Nice ball that. Um, two professional Harris and Harris, who is usually such a a good um, player, just couldn't control it. Good work. And there's the number 12. He's arguably the man of the match so far. Certainly. And the technique was bad by, um, you by know, Harris. yes, he, he needed to take that ball properly on the outside of his foot, and he would have been one on one with the goalkeeper. Opportunity missed. Fishnal Harris, when he's on song, is the best attacking midfielder in Jamaica when he's at his best, but that time around just, just you know, tripping over his own feet almost. Well, Patrick Brown has decided he wants to play. He's taken over the game, and that's good for Arnett. All right, here's Arnett Gardens again. A little slip. This could be costly for the UWI team. And uh, there's Fabian McCarthy trying to dribble his way. Here's a chance for a shot on that left-hand side, but blocked. And Arnett Gardens will come away with it. Oh, well, do you realize it's 13 minutes gone in the game, and UWI has not ventured in the penalty area with the exception of the corner? Yeah, they've... And they haven't taken a shot at goal? No. And it that definitely has... Um, Looked a little bit more threatening. That's a good tackle from Oldham, winning the ball nicely. And the ball given away. Poor ball that. There's a lot of bounce now for the U of the White. Comes to his right. And he finds Andre Humphrey. Humphrey wants movement. Want to see people moving. And to go back. Here is uh, McCarthy now. And McCarthy again to Humphrey. Humphrey coming inside, but the ball was easily won. Can Humphrey make something of this? He's fouled. And uh, Patrick Brown all over the place in both attack and defense. Disrupted the play that time. Did Patrick Brown? He says, I didn't like the look of that. I think the coach, Alex Thomas, must be happy with the performance of um, Brown thus far. The question is a 4 2 3 1 formation. I'm thinking it's a, it's a conservative formation, deliberate on the part of um, coach Andrew Perry. Because UWI have not been venturing forward in any meaningful way of the game. That, Patrick Brown, comes out on the left again to Beb. Beb wants uh, to see people going forward. Up front to the industrious Patrick Brown. Back inside, well, he didn't allow Paul Wilson to get a touch. Paul coming up again from the back. Jamar Martin now spreads it over to the right towards Price. And, um, Oldham it is again for Anik Gardens. Loops it up inside. Good ball. That is going to be a goal, though. Vishnal Harris just couldn't quite get a toe to it. 
However, both players were making the same run. Yes. One should have gone wide, one should have gone in, in front. And here it is, Ricardo Oldham, squeeze it up, Sir Ali, and this is the point you were making. Exactly. Both it's players made a similar run. Instead of recognizing and being a decoy um, for the for the wide ball, Chanel Harris there, within whisk of getting a toe to it, so you could say that that is his second boo boo in the box. <laughs> and uh, here's Patrick Brown. He's everywhere. He's got loads of energy. It appears. Here's Oldham again, already doing well in that central defensive midfield area. Good ball over to the right towards Price. Wants to loop this one in the box. He does. Oh, Vishnal Harris again can't control. Vishnal Harris in the box, getting another good ball inside. And if his first touch was better, he could uh, be looking at Atmal Knight face to face. Again, not the greatest uh, first touches by Vishnal Harris. The trouble of it, he should have taken another touch. He was free. All he had to do was move the ball forward, and he would have had a clear shot at goal. Is having 53 percent possession so far, you would like 47. So, Anand Gardens having the possession, creating more goal scoring opportunities so far, haven't, haven't created and forced a real save. But they're still looking the more um, attacking team at the moment. Here is uh, the UWIT ball inside, and will allow will be allowed to run outside for a goal. I'm not sure that was a, an attempt at goal rather than a pass. Uh, but those statistics you gave was, were a little misleading, Orville, because although UWI has 47%, it's really in a negative area, right. not in the att attacking third. Here's the UWI with the ball at the back. Michael Heaven sends it to the front. And the ball will come back to the defensive area of Portmore to Murphy. Well, not to Murphy, to Humphrey. And then ball up front was supposed to find Jabari Hilton who's been rather quiet for the UWI team he scored three goals the number 14 but for, for the UWI but he hasn't been seeing too much of the football well the service isn't coming his way that that's a disappointing thing well now he's come I'm deep to take it trying some little fancy footwork is Jabari Hamilton but he's come almost on the halfway line to get it he's playing in that attacking midfield role but he's not seen too much of the action and here is he now he's not being seen too much of the ball so he probably wants to hold on to it literally and here's Anand Gardens with the throw Michael Webb who's done some good work on that left hand side and here's a long ball up field and asking Thorne Simpson to get there he himself hasn't seen a lot of the football either for the UWI no he hasn't um, again it's it comes down to service over it there doesn't seem to be enough midfield players and I'm convinced now that it's a tactic that um, the UWI coach spirit has come with that let us con play containment let's not concede in the first half and then maybe hopefully they'll go on the attack in the second and bring about some excitement in the game yes maybe that's the plan here's Michael Webb now hold up over to the right price long ball upfield he's asking sure who he was passing that to but this one is back to the goalkeeper Can't hold on to it have to be careful They're playing out of defense the midfielder for the UWI team hasn't been able to get the passes up front we're already seeing where Oldham is very effective for Anik Gardens in and just bringing the pass up front Wilson also has been fairly effective but the midfielders for the Arnett Garden, for the UWI team, Hunter and McCarthy and company, not having the same effect in getting the ball forward. Well, in their lineup, Orville, they have two defensive midfielders, and that's a clear sign that they have come to defend. And I'm not sure why. Here is uh, Wilson. Wilson was tackled from behind. The referee department says, no, I won't have that. There's Wilson moving on to the lower part of the back. And it Gardens wins a free kick. They take it quickly. Michael Webb coming to the left. So Patrick Brown. What will Brown do here? Brown comes inside. Back to Webb. Webb floats it in. And uh, headed away. 
ball will come up towards Price. And again, another throw. The Anna Gardens team must use these um, possession to their advantage. advantage, though. Yes, and um, the thing is, Oldham and, and, and Patrick Brown has decided that they want most of the ball, and they've been creating quite a few chances. I just don't believe that they're... The, the, the final pass Orville has not been as exact as it should be. Wilson rolls it out towards Brown. Brown coming inside. And uh, just giving him the ball. That was poor that time around. And there's uh, McCarthy, but that too is also a bad pass. And here is a ball slipped up towards Brown. Brown can't get the cross. Uh, and a series of bad passes there. Sees the UWI now trying to weasel their way through. Thorne Simpson forced to come back in his own half to try to restart the action and uh, whistle on the play for Thorne against Thorne Simpson the referee says I don't like the challenge from behind Mr. Oldham <laughs> and so here is it um, a little grab onto him maybe just tugging on and the referee says no he's seen enough here is uh, Fabian McCarthy now for the UWIT puts it up front here with Jabari Hilton. Well, he still can't get to the end of it. Um, and he'll tell you that was a perfectly flighted ball and he played it back to his goalkeeper with all the intention. Yeah. I just think he didn't know what happened. <laughs> so we're approaching the first half of the first half, if you may put it like that. And uh, here's Anik Gardens with the ball at the back. coming out of that play. Portmore now. I said Portmore is Europe line. Here's the now Matthew. Man who used to ply his trade with Montreal United. Now a chance for Barrett to do something on this left hand side. Oh he's tackled the referee didn't like the challenge from Dino Schaff. Or it Dino was Scaff. the long legs of Dino Schaff. And he's called Scafino. He used to play for UW. And look at that tackle. My God, that had some gusto and some energy behind it. Well, it's his former teammate. You don't know if they had a beef of something. Well, he did. The way he, he made that tackle. It looked as if there was any friendship loss. But the free kick will be taken now. And this is fairly deep. Damien Hyatt there, the goalkeeper, looking on pensively. Fabian McCarthy is standing up over it. And uh, you know football is a very ungrateful game. All that possession by on it might come to naught. Five white shirts to Weyman for McCarthy. And uh, here's McCarthy. The goalkeeper coming down and um, just punching it away. Not a bad effort, it was dipping. And here's Anik Gardens on that little quick counter attack. Here's Zelano. Here is um, Javani Sims, it is. And the kick goes the other way. Yes, it was a good effort uh, just a while ago by UW. It went for the near post. And uh, it brought out a good. Um, here it is. Yeah. McCarthy with a shot. It was dipping at the near post. They, it looked a little bit of chaos, but the Anik Gardens goalkeeper. Um, it was a good save in the end by Hyatt um, Orville. He picked up the flight of the ball. All right, so can this spur on the UWI team? That's a good ball coming over to the left. Could this be a chance for a shot on goal? Oh, good defending. And all the twisting and turning by Barrett didn't amount to much. Here's the ball over to the left hand side now for Russell. Russell for Anik Gardens up front. Oh, good first touch. It comes out to Harris. And again, Harris can't control. You know what has happened to his controlling boot this afternoon, and there is he lunging at the player after he lost the ball. I don't think I've seen him play as badly as this. He's a little tentative all over. He's all over the shop. He's not controlling. He's not passing as well as he can. Requiring two touches and he's not 
looking at the space around him to see whether he can control or he needs to make a one-time pass. Here is a free kick for the UWIT. And it's floated inside. Um, the Anik Gardens players will come away with it. And here's a chance. Well, this long the play, Anik Gardens wins a free kick well inside their own half. Just about 25 and a half minutes gone. No goals in the game yet, but we haven't seen um, the UWI team creating too many chances. Anik Gardens has had their fair share of looks, as they say in basketball. But neither goalkeeper, except for that free kick. Um, that Damien Hyatt did well to knock down. Neither goalkeeper has been forced to make uh, a good save. Well, here's Harris now. And again, look at the pass. Just a really bad pass, forcing Wilson to go too wide for it. Here's Oldham. Up to the right-hand side now for Price. Can he get the cross in? He does. But when he did, it was cleared away nicely by Michael Heaven. Not it was, the greatest it was a game. weak one, Orville. Um, again... There is hesitation when they get the ball there. They don't seem to know when to fire. Picked it up nicely. Turner had a crack. And there is he just gesticulating that maybe I should have done with that. Maybe he's carrying a little bit extra weight. Here is he. The, the ball coming over from the throw. He controlled. Was at an angle, but banged it off the post. And he's such a quality player that he can hurt you. And he got by the defender, put it on the right boots, and clanged it against the post. Really couldn't blame him for much of that. And um, that is the best opportunity that Arnett Gardens has gotten. And again, though, Michelle Harris couldn't do anything with it. Here is the UWI. Here's a chance. Oh, the shot blocked. Barrett couldn't quite swing the boot through it. And all of a sudden, now the game has opened up into a nice um, two-way encounter. Well, that's because UWI has decided to go on the attack. And um, their confidence seems to be there. They're realizing, although they're in the jungle, um, they can go on the attack. They're, the counter-attack isn't happening. Here's a chance for Wilson, but Wilson is forced to go wide inside. Oh, here is uh, Brown outside to Wilson. Wilson comes inside, wants the return ball, gets that one-off shot on the volley. Idea great, excellent effort. skills great. <laughs> Just didn't connect as he would have liked. He's a nice little midfield player, is Wilson, and uh, good build up, but just couldn't lace the volley. And they again, call him Kiwi, yeah, <laughs> but he needed to kick well. Kiwi needed to kick well on that occasion. He's had a, a decent game so far, uh, but didn't couldn't quite put the shot on target that time. Here's Humphrey for the UWI. He's foul. I think it's the other way. I think it's going to be an on it ball. Well, I thought for a minute that Humphrey one was the one who was fouled, but the kick will in fact go the other way. And here's Wilson. Nice ball out towards Patrick Brown, who goes to the right hand side towards Price, who loops it up. Goes the other way. Oh, here's Brown again. Wilson can't control. And the UWI will come away with it. Plummer. Now it comes over to the right. Oh, too far ahead for Simpson. Now then, here is a Russell. For Arnett Gardens, can Russell get the ball on his foot to shoot? Beats one, beats two. Oh, they couldn't quite put it down. Brown. Over to the right. Ball scooped inside. Ah, oh, why didn't the goalkeeper come for that? Poor communication. And the goalkeeper, I thought, should have said you were alone. Here it is again. We are Russell Twist and Turns, managing to get the ball on his right boot. Slips the pass across. And Javani Sims couldn't quite control it. Well, Sims had his back to the goal when he should have been facing the goal. Uh, it required a little selfishness on the part of Sims to have gone through. I would have taken that through and fired a shot. There you go. And this is an Arnett Gardens corner to be taken by Russell. Lennox Russell, just about on the half an hour mark, and no goals in the contest yet. Here is the corner kick, and um, will be cleared away. Neither goalkeepers had much to do with the exception of that opportunity that UWI had on the free kick of it. That was uh, perhaps the the most 
work that the goalkeepers had to do all night. Yep, both both teams have seen their fair share of opportunities in and around the box, but the goalkeepers, for the most part, they've got to be careful, but no really outstanding save yet. Here is Russell Ferran at Gardens now. Scoops it inside and headed away. Comes out to Oldham. Oldham puts it down. Wants a crack, floats it. Oh, I see what he was trying to do. Uh, yeah, the the central midfielder there. coming up. The execution didn't. Perhaps he should have taken that ball on the bounce. But give him marks for, for, for good effort and good thinking. He's playing well. Here is he coming back to that central midfield role. He's one of the players of the game so far. Has been steady. Here is he, Oldham. Has made very few mistakes. Has been solid in that central defensive mid midfield role. And here's another ball up front again. They're asking Sims to get to the end of it. And um, Sims can't get there. Michael Heaven is trying to patrol it outside, but Sims manages to keep it in play. Sims goes down, it's going to be a free kick. Uh, I want to say good defending all day because um, UWI looks a little frail in the fence, although now, they are playing defensively. Here's Sims. Oh, that was a hand to the face yes. by Michael Heaven. And the referee says, I'm never ever going to allow that. And it's going to be a free kick to Arnett Gardens just about on the on the corner flag. Close enough. And let's see. It's Paul Wilson. No, well, he leaves it alone. Well, he gets the short pass. And they made a, a mock of that. Well, that was a training ground effort that went bad. Yeah. Didn't quite pull it off. And Arnett Gardens will try to build it from the back again all the way to Damien Hyatt. Comes to the left towards Webb. Oldham. Robust in central midfield and pretty decent at getting passes forward. Here's Wilson. Good ball that down the right hand side towards Price. Price uh, is fouled. No, it's not Price. It's the hard working Patrick Brown. I should have known. Patrick Brown is everywhere. Can you keep the space up? He's Whenever the ball is played, he seems almost ine inevitably at the end of it. Well, he's writing himself all over the game. He carries a very famous name, Patrick Brown, the, 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 the playwright. Yep. So, but he's really writing the performance tonight for Arnett Gardens. All so right. far, as you said, Ovi, he's the player of the game. Without doubt. Certainly the one that is most involved. It's going to be Sims with the free kick now. Floats it inside, and the goalkeeper punches. He could have held that, I think. Here is the... Oh, that was a disappointing effort, that by Wilson. He's too good a player not to do better with that and um, really never got the laces through the volley and the ball no but the intention was good there's the goalkeeper point. he should have held on to that and uh, well he took no chances and uh, the resulting arm kick was not what it should be but nonetheless um amal knight in goal uh, he hasn't had too much to do in fact most of his work is kicking out the ball <laughs> yeah that, that is Pretty much what has happened so far. Nilal still the scoreline. Referee allows play to continue. Ballet wanted something out of it. And here's Anik Gardens now. Here's Webb. Webb inside to Wilson who's come deep. Back to Webb. Webb. Back to Harris. Wilson. They're bouncing it around Anik Gardens nicely. The final ball is up towards Russell. Can he get to the end of it? He does. Once options. Inside, shot taken. Wilson, here's a chance. Oh, it's all happening here. And um, the UWI in the break. Player has gone down. Looks like Oldham. And the referee has now stopped the play. But Arnett Gard is getting the opportunities here, Ali. And well, not making them count as um, Oldham will receive some treatment. Well, and it only have themselves to blame. The hesitancy in the box is what's is what's happening. The football orbit is about time and space. You have limited time, limited space. And here we lo we're looking at it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But There's an opportunity. Yeah. Lovely ball by, by, by number three. Coming outside, Wilson with a snapshot. He was appealing for handball, and then Sims with a shot. But you notice know what happened to Sims. Sims was all over the ball, and he posed before he kicked. He should have attacked the ball. 
and that would have given him that extra few seconds before he was closed down. They're attending to Ricardo Oldham at the moment. Just checking to see if all is well with him. How well, can ill afford to lose him in the middle of the pitch? The, the medic was laughing, <laughs> which is usually a good sign that the player is not unduly hurt. Well, they ask him, are you seeing two fingers? And he probably said four. There's a shot of the Member of Parliament, Mr. Mark Golding. And um, Coach Peer taking the opportunity to talk to his players. The Gardens taking the opportunity to refresh themselves. Nilol, after some 35 minutes, but it has not been a lackluster game by any means here. Ali, both teams have come out with an intent to attack. Neither team sitting back, but the shooting and that final pass inside the, the box hasn't been the greatest, but it has, for the most part, been an entertaining game. So far, if you can say a nil all game is entertaining. Yeah. And the players are staking an opportunity. There is obvious signs that the two teams are very wet. So work being put in. It's a, a humid evening down here at the Tony Spalding Sports Complex. There was a time when we didn't think the game was going to play all well. Because of rain. And, yeah, and it's an opportune time to mention a, a little unfortunate thing that happened at um, the Stadium East today when um, the game between JC and uh, Wilmers in the Manning Cup uh, lightning struck five players. Uh, Young Jones of JC, who is the defender, uh, we understand is, is, is the one that's most hurt. And we do pray and hope that something will happen uh, yep. for him. Uh, while we were speaking there, Thorne Simpson getting behind the defender. And uh, just spray the shot wide. Terence Jones of Jamaica College was a defender who was taken to a hospital due to the strike. We understand that at, what, at one point he was aware of his name, but not much more. Not quite sure what happened to him. Three other players we understand were complaining of feeling ill effects of the lightning. The brightness took them out, and I, I was told that they fell to the ground. Right. Well, Damon Hyatt is unhappy about something. The, the custodian of the Anik Gardens team probably wasn't happy that Thorne Simpson could get behind his defender. And then lucky the shot was sprayed wide. Here's the corner kick now. It's going to be taken by Andre Humphrey. Sprays it inside and oh, the volley. Um, never went anywhere on target. It was Roshan Plummer who came out of defense. And you could see why he's a defender there, <laughs> Ali. He really yeah, just he used his foot side and he didn't know how to, to, to slap that into the goal. That needed your instep being put into the ball to, um, you know, to create something against a world-class uh, keeper like Damien Hyatt, who is on the verge, as you say, of being recalled to the national setup. Yeah, he's one of the top goalkeepers in the island when he's playing at his best, Vishenul Harris. Um, either was a handball or, a, or, or giving him the throw. He has certainly not been at his best, but he's a quality enough player. Hit the post earlier, and um, he's saying, just ensuring that it's a throw. Referee saying no, it's a it's a free kick. Might have been not happy that he didn't handle the ball. If I may go back to fit, um, to to Harris, that opportunity that he had um, all day was a little unfortunate. Um, he was leaning back when he when he kicked the ball, and that's why it ricocheted off the post instead of being inside the net. All right, so here's uh, Wilson tries to get it, but it's uh, towed away from him. Here's Oldham. Good ball that. And he finds Sims. Sims outside to Russell. Russell did well. Well, he did well with the control. He did well with the turn. Well, he didn't do all that well with the shot. <laughs> and you need to do well on the shot. Two out of three isn't good enough. He, he, he controlled well, turned well. And then they... He showed the last that time, Orville. That was a lovely turn, a lovely flake um, fit before. To, to get off the defender, just the execution wasn't capping off the beautiful move. And again, another Arnett Gardens opportunity inside the box that went a begging. Here is the ball with Webb. Webb retains possession. Here's Harris. Comes back to Webb. Webb will allow it to run outside. The ball goes against him. Why would he allow that? He had no place to go then was trying to con the referee into giving him the throw. 
<laughs> the referee, Mr. Dayden Park, made saying, I will have none of that. Here is Oldham again for Arnett Gardens. Comes back defensively with it. Of Scaff. Let's go to his right. Oh, that was taken away. Here's a chance for the Portmore team now. This is... This is I keep saying Portmore. It's the UW-White. Comes to the right towards Zelana Barnes. Barnes! That little back heel intended for Andre Humphrey. Uh, didn't get to Humphrey. Here is Humphrey again. Scoops it inside. And here's a chance! Oh, but... Um, has the flag gone up? You could have been offside on the far being post. Offside on the far side. But you know, Orville, they say goals are scored at the beginning, near halftime, just after halftime, and towards the end. The honored defense over the last few minutes seem to have fallen asleep because you have seen so many opportunities that are presenting itself to UWI. Yeah, that time Thorne Simpson couldn't quite stay outside of the offside trap. Here is uh, the UWI trying to start another thing going here's the ball with uh, Barrett Barrett to the outside for Barnes Barnes coming back inside now here is a chance for Swain Barrett what really that was an atrocious finish for Swain Barrett and he's had better attempts at goal and uh, here is Arnett Gardens one more time oh Patrick Brown pushed to the ground. Oh, he didn't like that. He retaliated. And uh, referee parchment in the middle of it. Saying he didn't like the look of that. He's having a little talking to now to Patrick Brown. That's a, that's a yellow card. I I, I, well, you talk us through this, sir. And he was pushed. Yes, well, it's, it's then, part of the game. And then You've he got, got to up control yourself. and decided he's going to be pushing back the man. So maybe both. Maybe the referee is cancelling it out. Here on the other end, though, is Russell. Russell for Arnett Gardens. Russell just can't get the ball on his right boot. Now he swings it inside for Webb to get it inside, but it's clear away. Now, here is three against three. Barrett with it. Barrett has a chance to slip it to the right or to the left. He opts to go to the left towards Thorne Simpson and didn't get it to Simpson. Barry Hilton was an option that he could have exercised. But then the ball going into touch, it's going to be a throw for the UWI team. Yes, good defensive work by Shamar Price that time. And here's the pass floated up inside and uh, headed away. And uh, here's a chance for Sims. One minute of time to be added on, by the way. Here's Sims with a long ball upfield and good defensive work. Andre Humphrey with it for the UWI team trying to pick out Hilton didn't get there here's Vishnal Harris now Harris comes inside nicely here's Wilson Wilson back to Harris oh the pass was not what he intended and now here is Barrett on the left hand side towards um, Simpson and Arnett Gardens would have done well whistle on the play well, I thought that he would have escaped that, but he got a yellow card. Uh, looks like uh, Martin, is it? Yeah, it's Jamar Martin. It is, it is Dina Scaff who, who got it for this tackle. And uh, really for just almost trying to wrestle his man to the ground. I think that it's was a combination of it. That was a little harsh on, on Dina Scaff, that yellow card. No, I don't think so. I think what happened first, he dragged the guy... Uh, the guy's feet and then what he tried to do was wrestle him as you said and so it's a combination it's a warning by the referee listen cool down a little bit referee is saying go back look at the look <laughs> look at the look <laughs> um, of the players on that time around but here's going to be the free kick Shamar Price was looking at the Would referee you want to be a referee all in these looks games? could kill <laughs> He was telling Shamar Price to go back, and he was reluctant. Here is a free kick coming inside. Oh. Uh, side netting. Yes, it is. I was asking you, would you want to be a referee in these kind of games? How much money do referees get? I'm not at all sure <laughs> if they are paid even. <laughs> no, they do get paid. 
Well, um, one minute of time to be added on, as you'll see there. There is the um, fourth official demonstrating that. That's going to be a corner kick for Andre Humphrey again. Concentration needs to be here for the Arnett defense because they seem to be tiring a little. Here is the cross coming over and uh, headed away. And uh, will Panic be able to put it down and do something with it? He's outnumbered. Tries to get by one, by two. Well, there were two minute defenders around him. And in the end, end up going nowhere. Here's Wilson now. Wilson inside. And uh, ball coming back to Wilson. Wilson didn't see a forward pass, went back defensively. To Scaff. Gets it back. Gives it back to his central defender. And Wilson with it in the middle of his own half. Good ball up towards Patrick Brown. Brown passes one, is fouled. And a yellow card again to be shown. And um, for tackling from behind, referee Parchment saying he did not quite like the look of that. And uh, the player looks to be uh, Shamar Hunter, it is who gets the yellow card. Referee says, I didn't quite like the way you stopped. Well, they have the, to, the referees have to take control. Uh, again, that, that's a from vicious the, tackle. Yeah, clipping the heels. Yes, it may look innocuous, but I tell you always, that's a vicious tackle. You can really get hurt from something like that. I think that that now is a, a fair call. Here is Arnett Gardens with what could be the last kick of the game, and guess who is about to take it? It's Shamar Price. And uh, Wilson it's, is also standing up over it, so it's Oldham. It's a good, it's a good distance. And as we saw last week, Parkinson from a similar distance. Yeah. Let's see. It's a price. Oh, that wasn't far away. That was a not a bad effort. And uh, that was that as far as the first half is concerned. Some are price taking a great free kick. Just whizzing over the upright. And that's the halftime score though. And it guards nil. UWFC nil. And it has been an entertaining first half, Sir Ali, with lots of action. Well, Shamar Price is called Booksy. And that time he could have really earned the stripes by being a real Books by scoring that goal. It was a <laughs> tremendous effort. I love that. Uh, but you'd give Arnett Gardens the, the, the edge in the first half based on their control, based mainly to the performance of two players, which is Oldham and, of course, um, Patrick Brown in the middle of the pitch. Yeah, they certainly have played well. Alex Thomas, the coach there, looking reasonably happy with um, proceeding so far. And uh, there's a shot of the crowd growing all the time. And the Anak Gardens crowd usually ask a lot of their team. I think they should be reasonably happy with the way their team has played. And I think there are goals in this game, Orville. I've seen enough to say, yes, there are going to be some goals in this game. Yeah. Here are some of the highlights in the first half. We'll just take a look at that. Nilo, the highlights so far. The officials there just um, coming along with the teams. And um, players now meeting each other. Typical meeting and greeting before the start of the game. Then we'll just see it was the year of live with the kickoff. Here was uh, Fisherman Harris who was taken to ground early. Then the UWI team having a chance to do something. That was an energetic clearance from Oldham. And uh, showing Barrett coming to the end of that. And there was a ball floated up. Nobody from Annette Gardens could get ahead to it. And then there was a shot. A weakish effort from Patrick Brown. But he's been arguing with the player of the first half so far. But that left footed effort was dropped wide. And then there was Vishnal Harris giving the one two to Russell. Russell couldn't get to the end of it. And then Wilson at an angle. And uh, goal kick. So in the early exchange of the first half, it was all on it guards. Here was another opportunity. Ball floated up inside the vision on Harris. Just couldn't get the two on it. Any, any contact at all with that. And it could find itself in the back of the net. Look at that. I think that if he got anything on that, then uh, Akmal Knight could very well have been truly beaten. It was not the last time that Vishnal Harris would have an opportunity. There's a rather vicious tackle by Scaff. And then here's a free kick that was punched down. 
by David Hyatt. Good effort that from McCarthy. He's trying to steal it towards the near post. But good work that from the goalkeeper. And then this was another opportunity for Harris. Banged it on the post. Turned well. Good um, turn. Muscle his way past the defender, but the right footed effort was hit against the crossbar, which may go down. Maybe the best chance of the game. A little gesticulation to say maybe I should have done better. And then here's Russell beating one, beating two, slipping it to the right towards Sims. And then Sims didn't do anything with it. And then for holding on to his man, the referee says, I didn't like to make up that for the end staff. And uh, earned the referee's wrath. Those were the highlights of the first half. And now here's a look at the halftime statistics. And it got four shots on target of the five they took. The UWI only one shot on target. And it got me five fouls. The UWI eight. One offside call against the UWI. None on and it got three corners apiece. One yellow card apiece. And it got me 52% possession. And the UWI 48. In uh, a few seconds, Sir Ali, your quick thoughts on the first half. Competitive game. Uh, UWI started slow. Um, and it went on the attack, mainly two players, as we said, Patrick Brown and Oldham. And, and of course, um, um, I think UW realized they didn't need to play defensive. And it was not coming at them as they should. And then they went on game turned into a different game it became competitive it became exciting well let's hope that the second half will produce some goals but for now we take a break and we should be back with the action it seems we're getting started it feels just like a party it's time to get in the zone and now that we have started i love just feel your body like come and give me some more So it's now halftime here at the complex between the UWI and Arnett Gardens. We're going to use this uh, period to look back at some of the goals that we've seen so far in Red Star Football Mondays. We've done two matches coming into this one. So we're going to be looking back at the goals that we've seen in those games. Starting with a fantastic opener between the defending champions, Port Moore United and Malines United. You'll have seen those goals here. Three fantastic goals. Malines United running out 3-0 winners. Let's now relive those big moments in that big opening game. Nelson gets it to his right and here's a chance for a shot. And it's a goal. It had to come. Looks to be um, the number 15, Ryan Brown. He's threatening all evening. Could be another chance for Brown. Or he scores. <laughs> Ryan Brown has scored his second. And all of a sudden, it's Malines. Two, the defending champions for more nil. Here is Dixon, and again the crowd likes it. Whenever he touches it, he squeezes it. To the Hodges, it's three nil. Hodges finally scores. Some hard work by Dixon down the left hand side. And then we journeyed over to Compound over in the East Harbor View, to be exact. They took on Cavalier, and again we saw three fantastic goals. Let's relive those as well. From it and a fuck is it! Beautiful goal! <laughs> Farkasin who got a yellow card earlier for a horrible tackle. That was a screamer! He did it! Kid. Now another goal! Harborview has taken it! And it's a substitute who has scored! It's a David Scott who is not at home! And it's Harborview running right now! So there you have it, a look back at the six goals that have been featured in our two previous Red Star Football Mondays game here on CVM TV. In just a few seconds time, we'll be getting ready for the start of half number two in this game between Arnett Gardens and UWI.
Chris Marshall, Vice President of the Arnott Garden Football Club, with the responsibility of the infrastructure. Well, Arnott has been around from 1977 and is a football driven community. Um, you know, they were, they were a double champion and last, the last two seasons we went to the top six, you know, and that was it. But this season we're trying to go a little bit further than before. Last several years, we have won it twice, we reached the semi-finals and probably four of our, about six, six years. Last year we never did so well, we finished fifth. But we have won the title five times overall. We have some good couple of players, but we have to just work, work and work. The preparation was good, but the, 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 the change so sudden, you know, it has have a little impact, so we know we have to give ourselves enough time, but everybody is a challenger. Everybody, every single team is a challenger. I, I didn't get a chance to recruit anyone. It was like four days in preparation for the first game, so, and the transfer window closed like two days later, so it wasn't any chance. I have to work with players that are in the club, try to find the best chemistry possible. Well, as business as usual, anyone, any, any coach come in, you have to work and dig in and fight. Every team is our biggest rivals. Don't take no team like I will prepare for every team. Everybody is our rival. Everybody, when they come against Arnett, want to beat Arnett. We look forward to a good season. We're never for the best thing. So win the title, because once we're in it, we're in it to win it. The football story where every match is an experience. So it's now halftime here at the footballing sports complex between the UWI and Arnett Gardens. We're going to use this uh, period to look back at some of the goals that we've seen so far in the Red Star Football Mondays. We've done two matches coming into this one. So we're going to be looking back at the goals that we've seen in those games. Starting with a fantastic opener between the defending champions, Port Moore United and Malines United. You'll have seen those goals here. Three fantastic goals. Malines United running out. Looks to be um, the number 15, Ryan Brown. He's threatening all evening. Could be another chance for Brown. Or he scores. <laughs> Ryan Brown has scored his second. And all of a sudden, it's Malines 2. The defending champions for more nil. Here is Dixon. And again, the crowd likes it. Whenever he touches it, he's physically stuck by Hodges. It's 3 nil. Hodges finally scores. Some hard work by Dixon down the left-hand side. And then we journeyed over to Compound over in the east, Harbour View to be exact. They took on Cavalier. And again, we saw three fantastic goals. Let's relive those as well. And that's Marcus! What a beautiful goal! <laughs> Marcus who got a yellow card earlier for a horrible tackle. That was a screamer! He did it! Kid. Now another goal! Harborview has taken it! And it's a substitute who has scored. It's a Devin Scott who is not at home. And it's half of you running right now. So there you have it. A look back at the six goals that have been featured in our two previous Red Star Football Mondays game here on CVM TV. In just a few seconds time, we'll be getting ready for the start of half number two in this game between Arnett Gardens and UWI. 
RSPL, the Red Stripe Premier League, is live here on CDM TV. Monday nights at 8.30 p.m. The game changes here at Free Rock Production. The football story where every match is an experience. the second half of the action here on Gardens versus the UWI and we're here at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex it's nil all after the first half and it's yours truly Orville Higgins here with Ali McNabb and there's the two teams and the officials just both teams warming up and Ali it was a half that could have been so much more productive for Anna Gardens but Vishnu Harris forget to to bring his the shooting, the shooting boots. boots to the game there is he and um, just show you some of the opportunities that Vishnal Harris would have had in that first half to make an impact in the game here and form a national player and uh, there is the first one he does have a chance to get a toe here but just missed mistimed his run slapped the ground the illustration good pass from old up to him and somehow the left foot just wasn't anywhere around look at the frustration on his face there and then this one was flicked on by Giovanni Sims he turned well and bang against the bar and he didn't give... connect very well on that if you notice when he was leaning to the side and he didn't curl his foot around the ball and there's uh, that little um, gesticulation slapping his palms together all right uh, and God and the gardens will make one substitution here at the start of the first half. They're bringing in Odin Samuels. Odin Samuels will be brought in. He's a he's a wing back, and I'm wondering if he's an overlapping wing back because I can't see them making a move to shore up their defense. All right, so unless it might be an injury that might force that. But then Samuels, we understand, will come in. We'll tell you who he'll be coming out for. And we'll just uh, tell you. All right. So another substitution uh, to be made. Kimani Airborne will come in as well. They've taken off. Sims and Kimana uh, Airborne will come in. And Javana Sims will go out. So there is the kickoff. And Arnett Gardens will try to make some early inroads. They are the home team and they've made two substitutions. And as if to say they want to get out of the blocks quite quickly. Here is Anit Gaz this time kicking from left to right on your screen. A long ball that was floated up front but cleared away. And um, Russell just couldn't get to the end of it. And, uh, the clearance that time by Heaven. Here is Anit Gardens again. This time floated up inside and um, again can't get it on target here's a chance for them to do something yeah. the guards are starting quite busy here Ali. well I'm sure um, the coach Alex Thomas must have said to them at halftime look you got to put the ball in the back of the net you got to be more careful and so they have gone on the attack yeah certainly come out like a house on fire this one is uh, cleared outside and it's going to be the UWI get a throw just on the the half time or the half line i think they want to push uwi back because as you saw the last 15 minutes of the first half uwi started coming into their own throwing players forward here's the, the throw up front for the uwi but didn't go anywhere here's Patrick brown brown wants the one two squeeze it inside 
hand that the substitute Kimana Airborne just couldn't get to it in time. He's on it again. They've started busy. This is Price down the right hand side. And what will he do with it? Slips it outside nicely to Patrick Brown, puts it on his left foot. And Brown just doing too much. And UWY will try to counter. Hilton. Over to the left. Good ball that. a chance for them here's Jabari Hilton again Hilton wants to see something happening but nobody's running and in the end made a back pass to no effect at all here is a chance now for Arnett Gardens and the substitute airborne gets the ball across can't find Russell and Russell will come back outside for Wilson Wilson ice ball inside gets it back and down the left hand side there's a chance for and the ball to come back inside it will be a throw that's the substitute for samuels showing some fresh legs some good energy down that left hand side but still no goals and we are approaching minute number 48. well it's uh when i saw them bring on a, a wing back I, he had to be an attacking wing back and he's showing that exactly first corner of the of the second half wilson it is who floats up to the back post and headed away will come out towards airborne the substitute will allow it to run and it's patrick brown coming over to take the throw no looks like they leave it for price and it is indeed Shamar Price who will take the throw. They are all in the box, so it's expected to be a long throw. Nobody really coming for it, so he's expected to wind up and get it in the box, which he does now. And headed out for a corner kick. There is no, um, there's only one more change that Arnett has. And we're wondering whether it's going to be Damari Deacon, the guy who scored a goal in the last game when they won 1 0. He's still on the bench and he's a striker. Yeah, they still have him up their sleeve. All right, so here's the corner kick floating in and no, oh, nobody wants it. Whizzing across the face of goal. It was a lovely. Look at the, look at the near post, and um, nobody reacted. Russell was the one who got the head around, but nobody was there. And uh, Annette Gardens continuing to get good opportunities, but haven't been able to put the ball in the back of the net yet. Now it's it's tragic if the UWI um, then scores, and Annette Gardens will probably live to rule all these missed opportunities. Arnett Gardens with the throw. Here is the substitute of in Samuels. You can tell he's a substitute, not sweating as profusely as <laughs> some of the other members of the team here. Is he now? Who but he's been busy down. for the few minutes he's on. Yes, certainly busy on that left hand side, is he? And uh, what will the referee do here? He says it's a UWI throw well inside their own half. 50 minutes on the clock. UWIT. Oh, well, it hasn't been a good game of football. It, it hasn't been attractive. It's been competitive at the level that both teams are at. Uh, I can't say either side has shown us that they have some quality. There have been some individual performances, but not as a team. All right, so here is the substitute airborne who is quick down this right hand side. Or breaks inside, but allowed the defender to see too much of it. Hilton now taken away. Wilson leaves it. Now here is uh, Harris. Harris goes to ground and wins the sympathies of the referee. <laughs> well, this is another glorious opportunity. We saw earlier um, where I believe it was Lennox Russell that fired in a beautiful free kick, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, I'm not sure there was anything in that. I, I possibly would not have given that, but then I'm not a referee. <laughs> Fabian McCarthy is charging into the Anak Gardens midfield. Maybe the referee is saying, well, he really didn't make any attempt to get the ball. He wasn't even pretending. He was just charging into his man. And the free kick now to Anak Gardens. It's about 30 yards out, but 
Somebody could have a crack from here. And uh, oh, it's floated over to, towards the back post. This could be interesting. It's Samuel's shot. That's well saved. Now we know why they brought Samuels on the field. He's an attacking wing back. That was a glorious opportunity. A training room effort. Here we see it again. Everybody yep. expected the shot. He was hiding that down the left hand side. Is the substitute Samuels got it on his left foot and banged it. And it's a good save. Excellent save from Atmel Knight. And good work that. Here's the corner kick and headed. Oh my Could goodness. Could have been an own goal. Could have been an own goal. He was headed by the number nine. Maybe he thought it was the wrong end of the goal. <laughs> wrong end of the pitch. Yeah. Torrance Simpson almost cost his team a goal there. Here is Arnett Gardens with the corner kick. Out of effort inside. And uh, nobody is there. Cleared away. Wilson did well to keep his team in possession. A one time cross inside the box. Too easy. That will not be Lackman Knight any day of the week. And not on Monday. <laughs> well, he's the captain. He has to play, um, you know, he has to give a good performance for his team. He's got to inspire them. That all night now will roll it to the left. And the UWIT will start another attack. So, Shawin Barrett coming for it. Floats it over. That's a poor ball. And this could be interesting. Here's Russell. Russell wants a shot, he cracks. Oh, no, Russell. He looks to have gotten a deflection, or it was just a poor shot. The referee helping him up. He went down, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> wanting the free kick. <laughs> and the referee saying, I'm going to help you up myself. <laughs> Which probably tells him, no, the referee is not going to um, give him anything. He really just muffed that shot. Well, after about 10 minutes, you realize that um, UWI has not ventured into the, the half of the... Um, on it garden steam and they have done well MacArthur there scoops it over and it will be allowed to run in, into touch and it's going to be a throw to be taken by the substitute Samuels again and that rasping shot on goal here is the throw and Harris trying to Wheel his way out of trouble. There's one on it, Garden Spectator. Using not choice words about letting go the ball. Yeah, not happy that Vishenal wasn't making the pass as quickly as he would have liked. Floated inside, but this will be an easy clearance. The trouble is that he's right. They're holding on to the ball too much. They're not using their team. There's no team play. They're not moving the ball around. Ball coming all the way back to Damien Hyatt. And Hyatt looks to his right for Scaff. Patrick Brown coming for it, loses it. Oh, couldn't capitalize on that pass. Was Russian Plummer, and it comes all the way back in defense for Anik Gardens. Just about 55 minutes gone. I still get the feeling here, Ali, that there is a goal somewhere. I'm hoping. So am I. <laughs> it's a long ball downfield there, asking the substitute Airborne to chase. He gets it close to the corner flag. Did well to keep it in touch. Or keep it in play. Here is Harris. Harris won a turn. Holding on the ball too long. And you can hear. Well, I hope the listeners aren't hearing. <laughs> because the fans are not pleased. And the language isn't all that pleasing either. That they are using. They're a little upset with Vishenal Harris at the moment. What are you talking about? The colorful language we're hearing? Yeah. See, that's one way of putting it. Fabian McCarthy. Well, what? The entertainers say they want to use it on everywhere? That kind of language. That's Fabian McCarthy who um, lost the ball for his team. Here's a chance, but the defense has been good. Here's Wilson now. Wilson, and um, the poor shooting continues. He didn't know how to attack that all day. He was stretching to hit that ball. It was never going to be a good, good effort. So if I were he, I would have made a pass. Yeah, really. It wasn't if anybody deserves position. a goal, all day, this young man, Patrick Brown, deserves a goal. Yeah. He has been as hard a worker as anybody on the field. And uh, there's Wilson who muffed another chance to bring Arnett Gardens into the lead. Here is Jabari Hilton. He sends the pass outside to the right-hand side. Trying to return ball. Oldham it is who will 
try to separate the ball away from the Yoda Blue Eye players. Here's a chance for Thompson on the right hand side. Oh, so the advantage is foul. And the referee will give a free kick to the Yoda Blue Eye team who hasn't created too many opportunities here in the second half, Ali. That's the first venture, to, though. Yeah, they may have to depend on the, these dead ball situations to bring people forward. And but that was, a, that was a ridiculous challenge. He was going nowhere, and the defender just took him out on the line. All right, so here's the chance for a free kick now. And it's uh, Andre Humphrey who will take it. They've sent some people forward here. And here's a cross by Humphrey, and uh, nobody getting to that from the UWI team. Headed out, and it's Humphrey who will take the throw. They had six players in the box, and none of them could be found by that cross. Couldn't be found. Here's a chance for... Oh, that's a chance for the, the UWI team. That Sims really just couldn't pull the trigger. Well, he was crowded by three players. And he tried some fancy footwork, but it didn't work. It was Torn Simpson, actually, who missed that. Now here is... And it gardens with it. Airborne it is. Airborne doing well. Oh. Well, not falling his way. Doing some work here is Airborne. Well, he was brought on to, to, to do some dribbling. He looks to be a pretty good dribbler, but um, good defensive work is happening here for, is. for, uh, for um, UWI. Patrick Brown, well, slid on the surface. He's certainly seen more than his fair share of the football. And the minutes ticking away. 58 minutes gone. Nil all the scoreline. Here is Hamilton. Forced to come back deep. Long ball up front. And uh, no whistle on the play. And Gardens will continue. Here's Brown. Brown coming to the right for Odin Samuels, who's go, who goes back defensively to Scaff. Martin. Over to Shamar Price. Wilson. Oldham. Maybe this is the tactic now by Annette Gardens just to play it around. And then they try to spring Patrick Brown. Brown can't get to the end of it. Rolls harmlessly to the Uruguay goalkeeper at Mount Knight. And another attempt at a goal scoring opportunity. Tamely coming to an end the moment one of the teams put the ball down and move it around they create chances it, the pattern of the play Owen has not been particularly good tonight let's admit that and um, on it looks to be the superior team if we can use the word superior but then they have not done what they're supposed to do which is put the ball in the back of the net all right so they're tussling for it here is a staff who will go back to his goalkeeper. And Hyatt now will boot high in the night sky. Well over the halfway line, it's headed in the other direction. The referee didn't like that. So the UWI is set to make a substitution. They are putting on Bell Navis. They are taking out Hilton. Truth be told, Hilton has not been particularly effective. And it's uh, Janoy Belnavis who will come on the field of play. Well, Hilton was a goal scorer. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't proven anything effective tonight. Has to take so. a shot at goal. He scored three goals coming into this game. And in this game, he really hasn't had a sight at goal. I'm so going to agree with that change. No surprise about that substitution. Now then, here is Barrett. Uh, Barrett. That's a new rule, um, Orville. Um, before, if the referee interferes with play, they allow it to go. The new rule now is that once it hits the referee, here it is. There is a, <laughs> he has to pull the play back. And give it to the team that had the ball. Uh, absolutely. That's, that's probably the fear. Here's the ball looped up. Over to the far side, but here is Anik Gardens who will try again. 
Wilson. And uh, Samar Martin springs it to the right. Here's Samar Price asking Patrick Brown. I don't know how much energy he can have, but he's done well here. But forced to come back. Price wants it, but he slips it inside nicely for Wilson. Wilson attempts to go to his left and then switches to the right. Back to Samuels. No, back to Price it is. Price back to Wilson. And Wilson comes back to Scaff. Wild so Garden showing a little bit more F, a little bit more determination just to keep the ball. And wondering if that will pay dividends. They put the header in, hoping to find uh, Vishnal Harris. Didn't get their clearance. Scrambled away. And, uh, and every time they put the ball down Orville and they move it around, they look organized, they look as if they could yes, do the something. Coming in. Can Patrick Brown get to the end of that? It's a little bit too long for him. And what will he do? Comes for, for Price. Price will go down the right-hand side, kept in check. But does well. Oh, the defender held on to him. Not the defender, it was really showing Barrett who came all the way back, but the cross in the end was a poor one. To, to the sea. Yeah. And uh, 63 minutes gone in the contest. Still no goals. And I hate middle of games uh, when I don't have a dog in the fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it takes away from the, the game. As a commentator, you want to see goals. And as a, as, a, as a watcher of the game, I mean, my team is Reno, who isn't in the Premier League as a, as a Westmoreland man. So I just want to see some good football. Here's Fabian McCarthy, formerly of Montego Bay United. Tries to dart his way through the middle of the park. Good ball that on the outside. And it's coming up front out to Zelana Barnes. Barnes can't get to it. And what's that happening here? The referee is saying, well, let's restart the play. Crowd a little restive. I'm not sure why. Not sure what is it that got the crowd a little, little, you know, as you said, restive a while ago. But here's Scaff for Anik Gardens. Scaff comes downfield to airborne the substitute. Has to be careful. Steps the pass inside nicely. Could Anik Gardens get something out of this? Too far ahead of Patrick Brown and cleared away. Be a throw for Anik Gardens. Deep inside the yellow blue eye half he gets the ball back what will he do patrick brown steps it inside nicely shot oh this could be interesting paul wilson shot wilson has a chance but that was cleared away i think the offside flag was no the flag stayed down the referee didn't quite the look of something well the ball was just bouncing around nobody attacked it and the the, 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 the couple of players that had the opportunity as we see the yeah, lovely pass by patrick brown wilson shot going nowhere and I think it was a handball against Wilson, actually, that the referee would have cited and said, no, here's another substitution. Thorne Simpson goes out. And the number 22, Trevante Stewart, comes on. Thorne Simpson hasn't exactly been a thorn um, in the side of Arnett Garden. Started well, but basically has just fizzed away. Well, Tavante Stewart scored a goal in the fall of um, victory for them over Tivoli. And I suppose they're hoping that he can do that tonight again. Right. That's the hope. Here's a long ball downfield for Airborne. Can't get there in time. And the goalkeeper, careless. That was just careless on the part of Akman Knight. He's yeah. almost saying to the opposition, you can't score, so I can do anything. I can just give you the ball. Yeah. Here's Patrick Brown now. And that Brown puts it on his left foot. Wants to have a crack, but good defensive work to close him down. Here's the ball outside now to Price. And Price looks up. Wants to pick somebody in the middle, but it's headed away. And it will come back. Uh, airborne, can he get to that? No, the goalkeeper. Uh, Akmal Knight was reading the play well. Made the interception. And the danger averted. And that was good sportsmanship. The, the, the player... Went in a little on the goalkeeper, but Admiral Knight didn't make a meal of it. Not at all. 66 minutes gone. And no goals. 
as you said Ali it's competitive it's not a boring game but it's not what you'd call the game of the highest quality yes there leaves a lot to be desired the you know this is not what we want to see our local Premier League play at the level and the gardens will be making another substitution here's the ball downfield towards uh, price oh price was going for the shot I think well, maybe not but he was going for a hard cross across the box he needed to chip that ball in yeah he went for power and um, here is UWY in the attack once more but the work that to take the ball away Wilson figures he was fouled and therefore he doesn't agree and then over on the far side this could be a chance for uh, Zelana Barnes Barnes is dispossessed here is and guards once more but in Samuels gets it back with the Samuels now he comes into the middle of the park and moves it upfield airborne's first thought was all that red then it, it was airborne <laughs> his airborne's first thought was airborne and a whistle out of play all of it is who ran into his back and uh, referee making a whistle on the play i think that air, um Oldham would be lucky i think to get away without a card for that that was a, a reckless looking challenge very reckless indeed Orville. um he used his long legs he was beaten by yeah. the defend uh, by the attacker moved the ball well and he took the man out i'm surprised he hasn't gotten a yellow card all right so russell will come out for Anna gardens and this is number 24 who will come in damar deacon damar is a guy who scored a goal in the last game to give them a one love victory so, this was over tivoli so they can't get a goal from russell and they've put on a deacon maybe they are expecting divine intervention here is Anna gardens <laughs> <laughs> when you put on a deacon they may put on a pass the next but um well there's still enough time there's russell about had, 20 minutes russell has seen some good play in the, in the first half definitely a bit more threatening but had yeah russell had some opportunities um didn't make the most of them perhaps he's having an off night um and i said it at the start of the game is the mari deacon the super sub well he has an opportunity to prove that well He's come on with just, just over 20 minutes to play. But you know, Orville, we can go back to the Waterhouse Harborview game. We saw Harborview beat uh, Cavalier, um, you know, three three goals to two. Yeah. And um, but if you go back to the first half of that game, Cavalier had their opportunities and didn't take them. And I, I dare say that the aggressive style of Waterhouse. Um, I'm not surprised, maybe at the, 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 the score line, but I'm not surprised at the loss. And here we're seeing two teams that are getting opportunities, especially on it, and not putting it away. And you come up against a side like Waterhouse, who is hungry to prove, having been to the finals on two occasions and lost, you know? Yeah. Here is uh, Patrick Brown. And he just couldn't quite ease his way through. The referee, Mr. Parchman, right top of the plate and he's saying no complaining from you young man waved him away <laughs> and um with Shamar hunter referee parchment says i don't want to hear anything you have to say hunter he was on at gardens now old limit is one of the players of the game so far he's been very busy in that um midfield area he goes to ground and he's calling for the medics seem to have really twisted his ankle somewhere what oh. is that cramps let's take a look at this again he touched uh, yeah maybe maybe the top of the knee yeah, he's holding on to well, yeah now he's holding on to the, the back of the well the wet conditions can make you pull your um your, your muscle um without much effort he gets up looks as if he will be good to go has been very influential in that central midfield role for the Anik Gardens team he's one of the strong men in their central midfield not afraid to go in for a tackle and not averse to a few words either I may be premature Orville 
But somehow at the start of this game, I felt it might end in a draw. And it's looking like that. Well, you did say that, yeah. You did. And they are both on three points. They have won one each, lost one each, so maybe they're going to draw <laughs> one each after three. It's to be Wilson standing up over it now. Rolls over to the right for a shot and goal. Oh, that was uh, not the greatest of efforts. And the story of the night continues. Shamar Price. He was stretching at the ball, Orville. It was rolled across. Again, um, a training opportunity that didn't wasn't executed properly. Shamar Price just couldn't get the shot on target. He really was under no pressure. Really should be doing better with that. I can understand if a defender is in your back and you have to hit high and wide. But when you are basically all alone on a shot like that, you really should be hitting the ball in the closer direction of the goal. Really no excuse. It is Kafna who scoops it over to the left-hand side. But then Samuels it would have to be another six foot on top of maybe the six two is now to get to that. No, it was the thought of what the, um, the center half um, was doing. I can't imagine what Scaff was doing that time. Neither do I. He had so many other options and to move the ball upfield. She's the wrong one. Here is the ball flipped inside. And uh, they're still muscling over it. It's not the play. This is like a game of scrimmage, Orville. That nobody seems to want to go goalwards in, in a meaningful way. Shamar Hunter again having one or two words with the referee, the number 19 for the UWIT. There he is. Don't be surprised if at some point Mr. Parchment just flashes that card in his general direction. He's been very full of verbals against the referee. Look at him. He looks quite mean in his face. Not the kind of character he'd look like you'd want to mess with. But he has been walking the line as well. Yeah. He has been putting in some aggressive tackles. And um, he's been complaining about everything. Here is uh, Manik Dad just breaking up a play. Good work that from Martin to thwart another effort. Here's Martin for Anik Dad again, who will uh, this time looking to go downfield, but uh, didn't quite do that. And now we'll whistle on the play. This that, that's going to be a card, I could tell you. Should be a card. Referee saying, I don't like the look of that tackle. And uh, the referee says that tackle on Janoy Belnavis, the substitute, was not the best. Some hands involved. It was overly aggressive. And it's Odin Samuels, who is the culprit, the substitute coming on and getting a yellow card for his trouble. Well, Odin Samuels started off well when he came on. And here we see okay, he just running into his man, charging him. You kind of ask yourself what goes on in the mind of a player when they run into another player like that. Especially in the middle of the park, the goal is what 30, well, maybe 40 yards away. No danger to your goal. Why would you want to pick up a yellow card in the middle of the park like that? Just, that tackle was meant to maim. That, that's my only explanation. Yeah, it's not the smartest play you'll ever see uh, Patrick Brown couldn't keep it in play the ball was handed back to Annette Garden so here is Odin Samuels the man who got that rather silly yellow card earlier here is Fabian McCarthy twisting and turning I'm a little disappointed in Fabian McCarthy um, to be honest with you well he came um, with a good reputation right um, he's not going with bad well let's look at this as the uh, ball stepped outside towards um, Barrett couldn't get to Barrett. He's not done badly as a defensive midfielder, is Fabian McCarthy. And Staff there did no nonsense defender for central guard for set for underguards in that central position. I think Scaff has a friend over that part of the field. Yeah. That's a fifth ball he has put in that area. But I was saying that um, Fabian McCarthy, in terms of creating attacking options, this has been a little bit too much on the defensive side for me. There's a wasted ball up front. And um, going to be a goal kick. It's almost a game that you wish to come to an end. Well, and I'm just being nice. Something could still happen. 14 minutes to go. It so needs a goal to bring some goal. life to yeah, the game. It's probably a game that does need a goal. Fabian McCarthy has made um, himself good enough to be called for national duties. You need your top players when the game is this tight to step up. Here is uh, 
that time around Hunter. Now Barrett. Barrett can't force his way through one. Scott. <laughs> Clear the way. Look, Tucker was trying to take Count Barrett out. You know, uh, the scarf reminds me of people that used to play in the 60s, where all they do is clear the ball. There's nothing creative about him and his approach. Well, again, he looks like the kind of customer that you wouldn't want to be in a brawl with. No nonsense defender. And uh, here is. He doesn't seem to have an kick. offensive game. No, nah, he's that, that prototypical 60s, 70s defender. They come. And the saying used to Clean be Clean up man and ball. Yeah, the saying used to be if the ball passed, the man wouldn't be allowed to pass. And uh, here is uh, UWI again down that right hand side. But again the play broken up. The game certainly um, competitive, but the, the, the quality of the passing has not been all that great. Patrick Brown. Inside it is. Here's a nice little ball. Can Alan Gardens finally score? Wilson. Now then, can they do something with this? Here's the chance for ear point. Oh, this on the play. Yellow card will be shown. Oh, that um, substitute Samuels isn't happy. Samuels himself had inflicted a yellow card foul on a player. And who is it that um, has earned the wrath of the referee here? Oh, it's, it's Fabian McCarthy. Boots high. Again, I'm not sure. Uh, in um, I'm not sure McCarthy deserves that. He had possession of the ball. He doesn't like the call, does he? No. And, um, you know, Samuels came in at him. And they both were using their hands. And uh, I thought that Samuels, um, you know, got the. W here is, here's the play. No. Oh, it's after the ball. That's what um, McCarthy got it for. McCarthy was saying he was the one who was fouled for the I, kick I, on the shin. And I agree with him. Maybe it's what he did after, maybe just stepping. The referee didn't like the afters. Yeah, his hands went in the face of the opponent, and, and, and Samuels came off the worst for it. But this has presented a glorious opportunity for Arnett if yep. they can find a player that can put a good boot to ball because it's, it's at an advantageous um, point. The referee, maybe just saying. Um, is your hand at an unnatural position here? And be, be very careful. Now, Vishnal Harris, Wilson, and Price standing up over it. Looks to be Harris with a kick. Harris! Oh, great goalkeeper. Great goalkeeper, no. Vishnal Harris has <laughs> hit the, the target once and has forced a brilliant save here. Well, Knight saw it all the way. He skimpered over to his left. There is a shot. Well placed. When someone was trying to quit down, Patrick Brown, it is now who wants to get it inside quickly. Goes to his left. He's predominantly left footed. Floats it up to the back post and uh, headed away. Here's a chance! Oh, no. Really, it was a team effort in the end. Well, it spooned off the outside of the boot. The player didn't know how to lay on it and really hit it properly. Uh, mm -hmm. A defenseman and... Ricardo Oldham in that central <laughs> midfield role. Attack is not his forte. And has done well on the defensive side. Here's a free kick. Good goalkeeper all in just under 10 minutes of regular time left the game needs a goal the game we're, needs a we're goal. praying for one team. yes we are long ball that don't get a goal from that it's going to be a goal kick, uh, uh, a throw rather to the uwi team well with 10 minutes to go can we can we really see either side scoring UWI with another change. Putting in number 55. Tajay, Tajay Griffiths. Tajay Griffiths. And they're taking off Paul Wilson. Wilson.
coming. It's Barry. So the number 55 is is Rowan Beal. It's Rowan Beal, not Griffith. Okay. So Beal going in and um, Barrett coming out. So Barrett uh, not not doing a great deal of work in this the second half. Again, it's a substitution that you can understand. I haven't seen anyone in the UWI team that I felt um, was up to standard tonight. Perhaps only the goalkeeper. Beal is a, a like for like substitution. Is a central attacking midfielder. Here's a chance for Danet Gardens. And they, they'll win for themselves a corner kick. So they've gotten at least seven corners in this game. If the substitute Demare Deacon was the one who forced the corner that time around. And it gardens now 57% possession. We are being told by our statisticians. Mr. Brian St. Drews, <laughs> who pulls the strings. So here's the, the ball floated over to the back post and headed away. Not fully cleared. Oh, ball not falling properly for Patrick Brown. Here's Wilson. Inside for Deacon. Now, we're, oh, a chance for the header. Oh, whistle on the play. 83 minutes gone, Ali. And uh, no goals. Uh, I'm still hoping. I'm still praying. But um, they say if you live in hope, you might die in constant spring. Well, here's a good ball up front, are they? Oh, it, was, it was intended. And didn't find his man. Didn't find Travante Stewart. And it's going to be a kick that goes the other way. Stewart is a known goal scorer. He didn't start the game, but... Uh, if he gets his chances, he can put some away. Well, let's hope. Let's hope they do that. It's a service that he needs, though. Wilson did well to retain possession. Here's Anik Gardens. This could be dangerous. Slips it to the back post for Deacon. What will the Deacon do? Oh, the Deacon twists and turns and ends up losing it. The crowd loving it, though. The crowd loves the Deacon. <laughs> Jamaica does it, or most people in Jamaica do. Here's a whistle on the plate. And um, the Deacon there, the number 24. And the player from the Euro Black Eric. Here's the Deacon. Seems to have taken a knock to the groin area. Has pace down the left hand side, doesn't he? He's has orders of space and isn't afraid to run at defenders. He looks to be a lively player. I'm just a little surprised that maybe he's carrying an injury or something. Why they wouldn't have started him? That is what you want from your substitute, especially when they play an attacking role. A little extra pace. And here is uh, the UWI. Zelana Barnes. It's floated over to the right. This could be interesting. Cross coming in. Oh, it's blocked. And it's the substitute with that. Five minutes to go, or will one beetle. Can I continue to hope? Yeah, I think you can. There's still some time left. There's a cross inside, and um, well, it goes nowhere. Trevon Stewart was trying for that little back header, and in, in, it's headed out, and it's going to be a, a corner kick. It's your friend Scaff again who just put that into touch. Yeah, Scaff has played well in that central defensive role. He's uh, a, a no nonsense man playing at the heart of the. In a central midfield, but central defensive role. But although at times he does come forward, but he's the hard man at the back. Here's the cross coming in. Get it out. And a whistle on the play. As Harris goes down, Vishnal Harris. This fellow little awkward on the shoulder, but says he's okay, he's good enough to continue to play. Well, as you see, um, the, the, the UWI player went straight into him with that elbow. Yeah. And so he was a little windy. Here is the ball in the middle of the park. Wilson turns his way out of trouble. Not a bad play that. Gets the ball back. And uh, will carry it all over the right hand side towards Price. Can he control? He does nicely. Inside towards Airborne. Airborne trying to get the one-two. That's an excellent ball that towards Price. 
was the most uh, clever finish or the clever cross into the box that was well defended here's Airborne again they play it quickly gets the return ball does Airborne gets the ball inside and um, scrambled away and the guard is desperate to find that winning goal they are the home team and I suppose and the guards with I think their ninth corner kick the Yellow Blower would be the happier of the two teams if it ends in the law they usually say a point on the road is not bad but so Arnett Gardens has to take the initiative well there's a glorious opportunity as was mentioned before that um, three points will take you into joint second place here is the cross coming in the throw coming in but booted away and um, the ball will go the other way I think the referee didn't like Scaff running into the back of his man and I think coach Alex Thomas recognizes that this will be a missed opportunity if they don't win this game here at home in the jungle. They certainly would want the three points. So valuable as the teams try to ensure initially that they are in the top six. So points are crucial at times in the league. There's, there's not a lot that separate the, the two teams or the, the teams. So sometimes um, making the top six comes down at times to three points or less. So every, every, every point is crucial. Well, when you look at this Arnett team, Aubrey, they're not a bad bunch of players. I just think that playing more games and getting more coaching, they will be better. I'm not sure about the UWI team. Um, I haven't seen the quality that I need to see to say they can become a good side. Arnett Gardens starting an attack of their own finally can something come of this oh no won't. good defensive work that comes to patrick brown downfield to samuels samuels to visional harris harris is fouled wants to take it quickly and in the end ups to go deep and allow the kick to be taken from players coming behind it here is the free kick Samuels to Oldham and here's Oldham makes a dribble will he have a shot he maybe just thought about it for a while and then he comes inside but all that goes for nothing as uh, the UWI players do well to so get the ball out of the fence and a long ball upfield too long and uh, the Arnett goalkeeper Damien Hyatt will take it the crowd wants him to start to, to play quickly They're at home they should be going after three points. Don't blame crowd for giving him a little stick there. No, I agree with the crowd. It's not time to play games. It's time to put the ball in the back of the net. Wilson it is. Now the ball with uh, Patrick Brown. Oh, here's Wilson. A Can he have a shot? He ups the goal left. And this could be a chance for Deacon. Oh, Deacon. Didn't manage to get it on target. I like the look of this player. He doesn't seem to need much space and time. And he's living with himself. I like the look of him. Oh, he's an excellent player. Look at this. Uh, there was loads of opportunity. And he takes it to the left. And look at the pace on that shot, Ali. But Just needed angle. to be in the far corner. Yeah, the angle was probably a little bit um, too acute for him. I think that, that was Anikard's eight shot attempt. And the Deacon can't do it and if the deacon can't do it <laughs> then you wonder if it can be done i don't think so three minutes to go three minutes to be added up so player goes down as we speak cramps the, the conditions there um over remember we had some rain today yeah so the the, the although the, the green uh the field looks flush and green uh, there is heavy on the foot conditions. Yeah, Ricardo Oldham was done as much work as anybody else. Maybe only Patrick Brown would have seen more of the football. So frustrated looking pair. He should be reasonably happy with that point. But I would coaches, think so. Coaches are <laughs> never strange satisfied. creatures. They're never satisfied. He wants the three points to come to Arnett Gardens and meet them on their own home turf. But I also think that would be he's frustrated Orville simply because his team has not performed well. Yeah. Certainly has, has been the best from either team, to be honest. And uh, here's the goal kick. Orville, we haven't spoken about the Sweller Dwellers. 
which is Port, um, Portmore, who have lost three in a row, yeah. and Tivoli, who has lost three in a row. Here's a chance at the other end. This could be interesting. Is this the time when the UWI does it? No, a lot of bonds couldn't quite get the end of it. Now, here's a shot that's um, blocked as well. And that may very well be the end of that. Maybe not. Here's a chance for Stewart. That was a glorious opportunity for UWI to steal the game. And um, for want of putting a boot in the ball the right and proper way. Well, this was the ball inside. It is uh, Stewart, it is, who rasped this right for the effort, the number 22. And it didn't miss by much. But again, he was stretching. All right, so it's uh, coming down to full time. We are mere seconds away now from the 30, from the three minutes uh, of time added on. And uh, by the look of things, this will peter out into a goalless draw. Well, not if Anna Gods has anything to do with this. Harris is blocked. Harris holds his head. He would be the hero if that had gone in. And another whistle on the play. This may be the last roll of the dice for the Senate Garden Steve here. And while Ali makes his way down to the far end, we'll he'll talk to the two coaches. Let's see if Wilson can get something going in the dying minutes. It's floated up by the goalkeeper. No, you're never ever going to beat Atmel Knight with that. And Atmel Knight goes down. And that is the end of that the two teams shaking hands it has been an interesting encounter neither team managing to find the goal at the other end and at gardens nil and the uwi nil and that will be the final score on tonight's action of monday night football as the two teams shaking hands the game was played in relatively good spirit there were one or two robust tackles and you'll have that this is the red stripe premier league after all but then the game for the most part was played in decent spirit there was really no malice between the two teams even when at times they could be overly aggressive little all the scoreline we have seen a number of goals in this year's Red Stripe Premier League, and this one will not produce any. And this uh, game now ends nil all. And I will uh, tell you what that does for the standing. And um, Arnett Gardens, prior to this game, were eighth with three points they would have now no we're not three points um yeah there would have been three points and so was the other team uh, uw but here are some highlights of the game here's the kickoff and uh, here's the corner kick floated in by patrick brown the header by russell nobody getting to the end of that Hold them there hovering in the background, couldn't quite get a touch. Here's a free a free kick. It was floated to the edge of the well inside the box and put in Samuel squeezing uh, behind the defenders. They didn't pick him up. Blocks to the left with an effort. That was well saved. This was another opportunity for a shot on target, but in the end, went nowhere. It's uh, Shaman Price who just couldn't keep it on target. And then here is the floated effort in by Vishnul Harris. That was also well saved. So most of the action, here's the free kick again. And it brought the best out of Atmel Knight. And another opportunity that uh, Vishnul Harris will live to rule. Here is another opportunity. Wilson slips it to the left. And the Deacon, the man called Damari Deacon, just couldn't quite uh, put it on target. The angle was acute, but look at him. He took on the defenders, managed to make some space for the left footed effort. Living with himself, you can see how competitive he is. At the other end, um, the UWI team created rare chances, but the Anak Guards defense was always sound. That's Rowan Beadle with a shock, and then that time around, 
it was Trevante Harris. Stewart Seffer, which was not a bad effort. Just over the bar. That needle there. I'm not sure what he was so disappointed about. Because that was not such a bad effort. And there is uh, referee Parchment saying that is the end of that. Nilo the score like both teams would have added a point, and there you have it. Arnett Gardens with some nine shots on target. Six that were off. And the UWI really didn't get their shooting was going either. Two shots off target, only one on. Twelve fouls for the UWI, nine for Arnett Gardens. One offside for the UWI, none for Arnett Gardens. Eight corners to four. 56-44 possession in favor of Arnett Gardens. Ali McNabb is standing by, though, with the two coaches. Ali, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Orville. A point apiece. I'm not sure if either of the coaches are going to be happy with that, or maybe they're happy with that. Talking now with Andrew Peart, Leoi, coach, what, what do you think of your performance tonight, and are you happy with the one point away from home? Yeah, given the way the game panned out, that was good. Uh, the first half, uh, we struggled uh, a bit because we just couldn't win all out, and the second half, we adjusted that. We got more control of the game, so just couldn't find the correct chances to, to, to create. So, overall, it's a good game for us. We are okay with the satisfied with the points. Okay, and um, did you learn anything from today's game? Well, yeah. Um, when you're playing against teams who have a strong momentum in the first half, um, to come out without conceding as we do. That's we have the one uh, but we need to work on the offensive side now because we didn't create as many chances or enough chances to pose a threat to them. Well, I suppose the good thing is that you didn't lose. And you can go back to the drawing board and look at what you did good or did bad tonight. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. All right, Coach, good luck going forward. Thank you very much. Well, you just heard from Coach Andrew Peart of UW. Let's hear now from the coach of um, Arnett Gardens, Alex Thomas. Alex a point from the game at home. You, mu you must be a little disappointed with the many chances that you got to score it tonight. Yeah, a bit disappointed, you know, And but we have to give thanks to get a point at home because at home the first game we lost. And that's a plus for us, you know, but we have to go back to the giant board and work in front of goals because we've been working all week and creating the chances but not putting the ball in the back of the net. What do you think went wrong tonight? Not scoring. <laughs> not just not scoring? Just not scoring. The trouble is that you had a glorious opportunity. If you won tonight's game, you would have leaped probably everybody into second place jointly. That was the aim to get the three points to, to, to go up in um, the ranks. But it never, unfortunately, it never happened. And we have to just work again and keep working and just keep Well, I believe your team has a lot of potential. The question is you need to pull it together going forward. Definitely. And we will get together. You know, the players are buying, um, responding quite well. But it's not going to happen overnight, you know. It's work, work in progress. Good luck, coach, and we look forward to seeing you uh, more and more as the season get, goes on. Thanks very much. Well, here we are at the Arnett Gardens um, Spalding uh, Complex. Another night of Monday night football. No goals tonight, but we have had an exciting game nonetheless. We look forward to seeing you come next Monday, when again on CBM Television, we'll bring to you Monday night football. That was RSPL Monday Night Football, a PLCA product fueled by Red Stripe, produced by 3Rock. The football story, where every match is an experience. <laughs>